Even though they've been extremely stressful for us as fans, let's talk about how these close, crazy games can help the Ravens in the playoffs. With the trade deadline quickly approaching, should the Ravens make any moves? Will Greg Roman really unleash Rashad Bateman versus the Chargers? These and many, many more questions on this episode of NFL Questions from Subs. Yeah. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs. Series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to, and we answer it in a video just like this. Now, if you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons. Y'all know y'all can send it directly on Patreon. And if you want to join all the Team Keep It Clean patrons, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. If you don't want to, that's fine too. You don't got to go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. I'm still going to love you re Regardless, um, this is the very last episode and that should be probably the last video before the game tomorrow before we go live at 1 p.m. for the Bengals and the Ravens. So without further ado, let's get into these questions. First question on this episode came from Madden Daily and he literally just sent this like just now at 3.56 p.m. Um, the time right now is uh, 4.02 p.m. Anyway, he said, Ain't Graven, I noticed that DJ Fluka and Matt Score are people who are comfortable with the offense and are free agents. Do you think we should sign them? Uh, no. Um, Matt Score, he got let go um, because it just it, it wasn't working out and it was time to move on. Uh, with DJ Fluka, it, it, it was the same thing. Um, now, if, say, for instance, something happened to an offensive lineman and you, okay, they're familiar with the system, probably Fluka maybe, but no. Next question came from Les. It said, Hey, Graven, hope you and the family are well. Give us a shout out on how Pookie is getting on. She's good. She's doing really, really good. So I appreciate it. That's, that's our little golden retriever, by the way. She's like seven months now. Uh, he said, one thing I have been thinking about with the Ravens is how much their close games this early in the season so far may help us when it comes to the playoffs. I agree. Uh, in the Chiefs game, we were under pressure, but we came up with the goods. Away with a strip on the Chiefs running back and Lamar converting on fourth down at the end of the game. In the Lions game, Lamar's fourth and 19 completion in route to set up Tucker's unbelievable 66-yard field goal. In the Colts game, Ravens coming back from being multiple scores behind to eventually win in overtime. These type of situations uh, where the Ravens have been up against it and under pressure, they got the job done. That's true because we've seen a lot of times where the Ravens have been in those same situations and they've unraveled, they've come up short. So seeing that from them this season, that's big. Uh, and he said the Ravens have proven uh, when under pressure, they can deliver when it matters most. Uh, I feel this is exactly what we need to take with us when it comes to the playoffs where there are no second chances. <laughs> that's true. Uh, the pressure is on and you have to take care of business. The Ravens have shown they can do this. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I believe Ravens are going to be mentally stronger for these close games, winning under pressure, as well as benefiting from the experience of playing through these stressful situations and coming out on top. Keep up the good work. Much peace and love to all the team. Keep it clean. Appreciate that. You are 1,000% right um, because this is it's just shown that they can deal with the pressure. Like, there, there's been a lot of people um, who will say, oh, Lamar Jackson, he's not clutch. Lamar Jackson, oh, man, that dude, he can't do it. But we, we've seen it. Literally every game this year, minus the, the Chargers and the Broncos games, uh, where Lamar was faced with a situation, Ravens are down, the Ravens, they, they need a big drive, they need a game-winning drive, and he's delivered. He's delivered in literally every single game. Even the Raiders game, too, because, again, they were up. He, he got them, to, to, they were up by three. All the, all the defense was in position, 32 seconds. So Lamar has shown us how clutch he is. He's got the it factor. And now the, this better equips, like you said, this better equips the Ravens as they head to the playoffs. Next question came from my guy, Beowulf. And, and hey, I appreciate you being a patron. Thank you. He said, I have been a doubtful fan on the O-line all season, and I have been pleasantly surprised. But what happens when Ronnie Stanley returns and Villanueva returns to the right side? That is a problem, in my opinion. The O-line has done well up to this point, but as the season wears on health and longevity, they are both a concern. Uh, it's looking thin. I appreciate all you do. Keep up the good work, and go Florida Ravens. I'll be at the Thursday night game to watch us educate the Dolphins. Thanks again, brother, and hope you and your fam are doing well. Appreciate it. Well, this is not a problem that we have to deal with this year. Um, and, I mean, it would have been a good problem to have, but now it's a problem of the past since they put Ronnie Stanley on injured reserve and he'll miss the uh, remainder of the season. Next two questions came from my guy Jarvo. He said, with the NFL trade deadline approaching, what trade do you see happening? If you were the GM, who would you try to get and with what player? 
we man, I've been asked this question a lot, and I just I really don't know. I really don't know. Before I might say inside linebacker, but with Josh Bynes, with them elevating him, I I don't see that. Um, before I might have said corner, but Anthony Avery, he's been doing his thing, and of course Marlon Humphrey still got Jimmy Smith, Tay Tay, and him, uh, and Chris Westry. He'll be back soon. He just started running again, so that's good. Um, offensive line, but I mean they just elevated David Sharp just now, so we'll see how he does if he even plays. Um, and the offensive line, they haven't been bad. They've been shaky time to time, but they haven't been bad. So, I mean, wide receivers are good. Sammy Watkins, he should probably be back after the bye. With set at tight end, Nick Boyle, he should be back after the bye. And then we still got Josh Oliver. Like, what is a standout position that Ravens could really, like, get a big boost from? I just, maybe running back. Run, running back would be the only thing I could think of. Um... That that's that's it. If they but who like you got Bell and you you like Bell Latavius Murray, you got Devontae Freeman and Tyson Williams. But if you trade for a running back, like what are you going to be able to get that's better than that? And I'm not saying that all running backs are all the best running backs in the world, but I mean, I mean anything's possible. So I I just I I, I really have literally no clue, man. Like straight up, no clue. And then his next question, he said, when we pay Action Jackson, independent on his contract, do you think the team will be will take a downfall like they did when they signed Joe Flacco? No, uh, because Lamar Jackson is a quarterback that's much different from a Joe Flacco. And again, it's no shot at Joe Flacco because, again, you gotta, you gotta, it's like you got to say that disclaimer every single time you talk about those two in the same sentence. But with Joe, with Joe Flacco, I feel like he was a quarterback. He needed everything around him to be right in order for him to do well. Except in the playoffs. It is, it's weird how that worked. With, with Joe Flacco in the playoffs, it didn't matter who he had at receiver. It didn't matter what he had at running back or whatever. He was on fire once he got to that point. It took a couple of years, but once he got there, it was like, ooh, okay, let's go. Um, but in regular season, it's like everything got to be right for him to do good. Now, with Lamar Jackson, <laughs> everything around him could be bad. And <laughs> we've seen that. Not to where it's just bad, bad, but... We could, like, man, what, what, what are y'all going to do? Didn't we learn our lesson from Joe Flacco, especially on offense, like not giving him, like, help weapons like that? But Ravens, they, they still continue to be the Ravens. Um, and But with Lamar, I feel like he needs less to be right around him in regular season. Now, in playoffs, we, <laughs> playoffs it's almost like it flips. Uh, but in, in playoffs, the, he got to get that right now. Um, so, and they, they got to get it right, but they are definitely on the right path to getting it right, uh, especially with the way the passing game has been. So, no, to answer your question again, no, I do not think that once Lamar gets paid that everything's going to come crashing down. Next question came from my boy Craig. He said, what's up, Engraving and Ravens Flock? Hope everybody's doing good. After playing the Chargers and shutting down a good high-powered offense, it feels better than last week when we were playing from behind, LOL. I know it's Bateman's first game. I like what I saw, except for that one drop. Do you think Roman will unleash him against the Bengals? I haven't really seen what their defense is like this year. What are your thoughts? For sure. I mean, he already got unleashed against the Chargers. And, and what I mean when I say unleashed, like, he, I didn't expect him to play all them snaps, but this was his first game. He's a rookie, a rookie wide receiver in the NFL. And they had this dude out there like he was a starter. So you got to figure that he's going to be out there even more moving forward. Like, I thought it was going to be a, a slow progress, like, okay, uh, since Sammy Watkins is out, it's going to be Prochet and Duvernay and whatnot. And boy, can he going to, I mean, Bateman going to get his snaps, but they're they going to be here and there. No, they had that dude out there more than all them boys, man. More than all of them. Um, so, yeah, I certainly think that he will continue to be out there uh, and continue to really uh, just make an impact like he did. And hopefully that continues and it just it progresses even more. In his next question, he said, um, I got, I'm back with two questions. Number one, what QB do you think Justin Houston will sack for that 100 sack? Will it be Burrow? Uh, if not, which QB would you like him to get his 100 sack on? Man, I, I, it better be Burrow. It better be Burrow. And then Burrow could give him the jersey. Be like, hey, this for you, man. So I hope it's Burrow. And I hope he gets 101 and 102, 103, 104, 105, 106. All that, man. And his next question, he said, looking at how our season is a little shaky here and there. Even though we're 5-1, and one, which big name free agent did we really miss on that could have helped us improve today? Thanks for answering my questions. And like all those players on the IR list, I'm out. Ooh, that's a tough one right there. Um, I love that question, though. Which, which, free, which free agent that we missed out on? 
um, could have really helped us today. Uh, who did we miss? We missed out on T.Y. Hilton. No, he couldn't help us today. We missed out on Juju Sch Schuster. He couldn't help us out today. We missed out on Kenny Galladay. Um, I think he could have helped out, but with Sammy Watkins, uh, with him really knowing the Greg Roman offense, that's that's been a, a, a big plus. Not to say that Kenny Galladay couldn't come in and do it, but Sammy Watkins has been doing it, and Sammy Watkins from Florida too, so that helped as well. Um, who who else? Who did we miss out on besides all them wide receivers? Um, I can't think of anybody. I, I don't remember anybody else who we missed out on ex except all the, the wideouts. Next question came from my boy Baron. He said, fourth quarter, third and eight. Bills need a first down. Bills snap the ball. Josh Allen drops back. Nothing open. Josh Allen decides to scramble to the sideline. He leaps into the air and gets hit by two Titan defenders. After getting hit, he lands on his back and his head hits the ground. Live broadcasters call it a brave move. It baffles me because had Lamar leaped into the air and been hit by two defenders then landed on his back and hit uh, his head on the turf, they would not be calling him brave. They would be take, talking about how he needs to protect himself. The double standard is real. Yes, you are a thousand percent right. And it's always going to be that way. Um, Lamar Jackson is not looked at like a regular quarterback. He is not looked at like a hero when it comes to these plays. Um, and when, when he gets hit on those plays. Uh, it, and it's, it is what it is. And that's, it's, that's exactly what it's always going to be. So as Ravens fans... You got to just get used to it. Next question came from T-Dog. He said, hey, Graven, hope you and the family are doing well. It just occurred to me that John Harbaugh should be the front runner for head coach of the year. Why? We have 17 players on injury reserve, and somehow we're still in first in the AFC, which could change at any moment, but that's still impressive. For example, look at the 49ers from last year. They were wrecked by injuries and did horrible that season. Not the Ravens, not John Harbaugh. We picked up three running backs, which no one wanted, and the Ravens are basically rejuvenating their careers. Sorry if this was long to read, but go Ravens and team keep it clean. Now, um, with... With that, uh, with what you said about um, the 49ers, they they lost their quarterback too, so that that played a big part in that. Because uh, when you lose, like you could lose a lot of other guys, but when you lose that quarterback, that would change everything. So, um, but yeah, I, I still would say that he should be a front runner right now. I mean, it's it's only week seven, so we got a long way to go. Even though it's gonna go by super fast, but. He definitely should be a front runner for uh, Coach of the Year. Next question came from Manny Well. He said, what's up, Engraven? Shout out from Mexico. Despite our comfortable victory against the Chargers, I was looking at the news yesterday that teams are suffering injuries all around and having a hard time to adjust to the new personnel they have on the field. But it made me appreciate the preseason uh, that we have now. It speaks volumes about our coaching and that no matter what piece goes down, we have a replacement for it. Maybe not on the same level, but close enough that you can say it's patch until uh, the guys come back healthy. Look at the Browns when they lost Chubb. No third running back. Uh, oh, well, this was obviously before the Thursday night game because uh, we saw, uh, I forget his name. Now, I'm not going to butcher it, but, yeah, they, they definitely got a third running back who took care of business. Um, but he said, uh, when the Browns lost Chubb, no third running back could do his load, and Hunt took off, took the brunt of it, and they lost him as well for a few weeks. What are your thoughts? Uh, also, Pancake Pat will serve a new pancake called Logan Wilson Special because of those disrespectful comments he made about Lamar. Um, but yeah, with uh, the Ravens have done well at replacing guys as best they could, because um, you're not gonna go out there and lose a, a Pro Bowl running back, Pro Bowl corner, and then you oh okay we we just we just make another one. I mean that'd be nice. I mean we still got a little ways to go now, but it's very hard. But for the Ravens to be where they are right now. They, they've done a really good job at replacing guys. Next question came from my guy, Ravi. He said, hey, Engraven, been watching your channel and appreciate you keeping it classy and putting a good rep to our Ravens fan base. I appreciate that, Ravi. He said, my question might be a throwback. Remember Kaleche Osimile? He did pretty well for us back in 2012, and it seems like he did well afterwards, too. Two-time Pro Bowl and one-time All-Pro. Seeing that he's a free agent right now and considering the current injuries we have with our entire offensive line, do you think it would make sense to at least reach out to him or at least get a workout from him? I know he's older, 32, but maybe he could add some stability. What are your thoughts? Hope all is well. Peace. I believe uh, he had a um, a bad departing from the Ravens. I mean, they just they they lowballed him. They lowballed him, and uh, the Raiders they wanted they willing to pay him significant money. He went there. Um, I mean, you never know, but I just think at this point, uh, and and at God, at, our guards have actually our guards have been well. Mine has been Cleveland. I was gonna say our guards have actually been healthy, but then Tyree Phillips, he was a starter guard, and he went down, and Ben Cleveland, he went down. So I guess maybe not. I mean, if they, if they could have it in the back pocket, like as a just in case, but anything right now, no.
And the last question on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers came from my guy Eli. He said, although we have beaten the Titans in the playoffs, after watching Derrick Henry eat up the Bills defense, how do you see the Ravens defense against him if we play the Titans again in the playoffs? Also, shout out to the Titans. Feels good to be atop the AFC. Oh, boy, them Ravens, like, <laughs> if they had to play the Titans in the playoffs, ooh, boy, that, that would be something because – you know how they, they not in the Chargers game, but every game before then they have struggled so bad with tackling. Oh, boy, they would just, they would need to get that right, like, ASAP, and like, for real, for real. So, um, if they could get that right, though, as long as they got that right, I mean, they would still have challenges because they would have to go against Julio Jones and A.J. Brown as well. So, that's a tough challenge, too. Um, but if they could neutralize, they would have to neutralize him early. And even then, even if he gets neutralized early, the Titans, they still end up going back to him. But what well, Ravens would have to do, stop Derrick Henry. That's probably when you really bring Malik Harrison out. But stop Derrick Henry, and they, their offense would have to score a lot of points to really just try to take Derrick Henry and remove him completely from the game. Because even with the Titans, even if they down by 14, they'll still hand the ball off to Derrick Henry. So that's why Ravens would have to go up big and big and big, get greedy with them points and run them up. Uh, in order to really beat the Titans and take care of business. Shout out to Graven.